strategize data roadmap and deliver high impact data science use case. So we're very excited to have him today to uh, speak to us uh, in regards to his experience regarding NLP. So please join me in giving him a warm round of applause. Thank you, Ian. Good afternoon. Hey, folks. Are you still listening? I know it's fall now. I think it's everybody gets sleepy. So you are okay to take a slight nap, right? <laughs> My name is Kim. I'm data science lead from SPH. And also, um, we also establish Data Science Malaysia. So it's a practitioner lead kind of community. So you know, every data people like to collect sample, right? So today we're gonna talk about NLP. So any one of you have done something on NLP? Okay. Or have know that the, the organizations or your team have starting out some NLP project? Or at least you know about um, the latest trends that this NLP is, you are following all, all these uh, trends of uh, NLP. So I saw the three groups, also the same people. How about others? What are you guys doing? <laughs> so today, um, let me give a brief introduction. Since that ninety-five percent of them still um, not yet heard about NLP, I assume assumption. Let's do the hypothesis test. After I after I introduce, whether see you guys have a better idea on this NLP. So today we're gonna have a basic intro and overview, and the current tasks used by the NLP practitioners, and also the use case, we're gonna share a use case, and at the end, the impact and lesson learned and challenge phase when you implement your end-to-end -end solutions. So why we need NLP, uh, why it's so important? The first one, the explosive growth of the data. In this case, data in the unstructured form. As you can see the green line, is the unstructured data that in, come in the form of social media comments, uh, email, text message. They occupy 80% of the all over the data. So the NLP helps us to unlock and analyze and unlock the uh, pattern and insight between this, all this unstructured data. Like you want to know how people are talking about your product or your company, you can do sentiment analysis on your social media. So we're going to go through using NLP. So other stuff is, in this world of consumer era, so we need to know our consumer better or the user better. So a lot of the data formats is in terms of, for example, whenever you come up with the iPhone, new iPhone, so you maybe will saw it for some, uh, uh, from the website, and then you see some people posting on the comments on how good is this iPhone is, and then they also like do, to share, like uh, then you go to the store to visit and to test on iPhone. So this mention about multi touch point of our user, they're gonna see the banner ads, they're gonna do some online search, and then this uh, saw other people do online review. At the end, lead them to the purchase. So all these data point we need to collect, we need to understand, and a lot of them is in the text form. So for existing use case of the company are doing is these are a group of. Uh, Social media listening company, the Facebook who suites, they are help us to the company to understand what consumer sentiment is, what consumer looking for. And recommendation engine, I believe you come across the Amazon, they always based on your um, they also using a form of NLP plus image recognition to to come up with their recommendation engines. And sorry to do some promo a bit. Um, from SVH, we also do our strict time. We also serve the recommendation engines behind the scene. So this, all these engines has been um, quite related to our daily life without you notice. And for finance, they, this company, Lando, they do a social, they scrap through all your social media uh, data and do a scoring, not purely based on your financial record, they also based on your social media record. And etc. So, if you if you see um, across the globe, there's a lot of use case, but there's less success story yet. Why? Because the language is quite complicated. In the what sense? Try to imagine you have a words or a simple statement. Like, you can have a multiple, in order to understand the language, you, 
um, you can try to do some um, classification tasks. You can classify based on the emotion, whether this message is based on frustrated, anger, or happy, the tone, and then the entities they're talking about, the product, and the adjective or the language itself. So are they, these are all the important keynotes if we want to take note on when we're building our NLP solutions. Who, this one sentence, who is a linguistic here? Or who learn linguistic? Can somebody point me out this, is it letter correct? Buffalo, 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 buffalo. It's a correct sentence in English. Why? Who is that? <laughs> Are you a lecturer? Well, uh, I'm California, so I... Okay. Ah, you know about it. Yes. Yeah, it says that uh, buffaloes who are in upstate buffalo are intimidating buffaloes from the... So it's a correct... It's a, correct. Buffalo is a city name. Buffalo is the animal name. Buffalo is a, is a terms of bully. So this is what means by there's a buffalo A from this buffalo city being bullied by buffalo B from this same uh, buffalo city. So you can see this sentence, uh, this is an interesting part of the NLP that find challenging. One word can represent three different meanings. And also the same, the true interpretation of the same girl. I saw a girl with telescope. So which one you would be correct? <laughs> yeah. And if you look at the historical involvements of this natural language processing, since two, uh, two, uh, 2001, we did start have a basic and, uh, language model. And the most frequent used one is the pre-trained model from the Google Birds. Today, I'm not going to talk about birds, so let the expert or the researcher to talk about the birds. It's the super accurate, highly accurate, and um, it can help us to solve a lot of uh, summarizing tasks and difficult NLP tasks. But today, we are talking about more to the practical, what you can use now, what you can start now. So this is the comparison. So for the top, we have a traditional classical NLP model. So usually, we, you, if you heard about the spam classifier using naive base, it's all based on this, the top one. We, use a, we, we collect the data, clean the data, clean the text, and then we do a pre-processing, tokenize it, remove stop words, lemmatize, don't worry, this, all these terms we will explain later. And then we go through, pass through the model to extract the uh, important features and then pass through a classifier to do, let's say you want to classify us. Whether this image is spam or not spam, whether this is a complaint or it's a product inquiry. So that's all is classical uh, NLP. For deep learnings, there we have much more. So the more powerful applications that the researcher is focused on in this area. So these are some terminologies you can know when you start your NLP project. So the corpus is a text corpus. It's just a the document string that you're using to pass into a model. Semantic similarities, passing, stemming, lemmalizations, and etc. So and for the tools, I believe these tools are for those who are writing in Python or Python developer, you might come across these tools. Jensen, Spacey, and NLTK. Okay, let's deep dive more into the, the specific NLP tasks. These are a few of them. And you can use by the PyCode uh, package spacing and NLTK. So there's stemming, stop words, segmentation of words, parts of speech, name entity, abbreviations, ambiguous terms, and etc. So stammer. Stammer just basically means simplify the words to the root words. As you can see, effect, affections become effect. Why this is important? Because in the ML system or the NLP system, they recognize different words from this. They only trick it like zero or one. So if you affect and affection, if you, do the, if you didn't do the stem, stammer, so you recognize as a different words. And also remove stop words that have little meanings. And so the ambiguous term. So I love uh, Blackberry. Is it referred to food or mobile food? But I know Blackberry food is no longer as seed in the market now. But they do have, in the historical, they do have people mention Blackberry. 
And then Jawa, is it programming language or the Indonesian island? So also handling the abbreviations, the shortened form of words, HDB, MIC, PMs, and TUC. If you didn't tell the machine do a lookup table, the machine will not be able to uh, understand it. And then for this name and extraction, so given a text, um, there's a lot of pre-built uh, name and extractor, which is quite good in the market uh, for the English uh, and Chinese word. So they can help you to give a text, they can help you to extract the product name, location name, people names, and etc. And the, every NLP talks, they always talk about work to work. So in my case, I still will do the same. So why is this work to work? is important because it has a magical power there. Magical power about they help you to train the machine to recognize the similarity between words. What words are come together? For example, this is to have a model here. So as a Java developer, what are the words have similar meanings to them? So the machine that gives us is like JavaScript, PHP, Android, etc. So we can use this by uh, using work to work and visualize using the tension board. Later, we're going to have a demo here. So, and also the work cloud. So, this is the work cloud for some of the, you know, the easy present. What are the high, highly frequent words related to project manager? Uh, any questions so far? So, other than this, there's a um, few other much more challenges. So, like, for example, the language library, some of the language library like Malay and Tamil are not supported by most of the cloud provider. So they are all done by the own individual researcher or the, the, the team that who want to come up with this uh, package. So you need to customize it. So for others, it's a spelling mistake, language translations, and informal language handling like social media text, and also sarcasm. So these are all the, the challenges but we, we're not going to go through one by one. So let me show you a use case that we built for built a job classifier engine using NLP for one of the Malaysia's uh, labor market uh, agency. So with the human look in the design, most of the system we talked about um, previously is all trust and machine learning. But for us, for the use case here, we want to introduce the human in the loop design to help the, to let the human facility what are the output, supports the output. So always the first thing we do is like to understand the business objective. So this project being done is to understand the current job market demand, and also supply, and also the needs for each professional role. So we scrap through all the job water, job street, indeed, and etc. So to get all the uh, job post data. So after you get the job post data on your left side, so they can have your company industry, company summary, job description. So this is got, uh, done through a web scrapping. So we, what we're going to try to do here is do a classification. So these classifications have, uh, based on our requirements, have four different classifiers. So first, you're going to classify in, uh, all those terms is their standard library from government. Must go job uh, category, and then music industry category, MEC, field of study category, and skill library. So these are the results you're going to see. A software developer get, are going to map with the ID there. And then um, those are the information there. And other than the classifier we're doing is also we're doing some information extractions. So you want to capture the keywords, like what are the job location that mentioned in the job post? What are the job level you need? What are the um, few of study they needed? So let's see the basic breakdown. So from our definitions, from the we received from the stakeholder. So these are the most of the uh, the tasks we're gonna do. For Masco job category, we have six thousand category, and for music, we have three thousand. So most of them is over hundred and two hundred, and especially for Masco, six thousand. Anyone have done something that classifies 6,000 category here? Yeah? 
So these are the sample lists that you have a job, you get a match with each of, of these uh, job roles. They, quite, they put it quite um, dedicated job role for each of them. They want to have the job post being matched to one of these. So first, we do a problem framing. So to classify a job post in a mass code, so it's a classification problem. It's a text based on text and language. So our input data will be job title plus the job descriptions. And this is very sparse data and text-based data. And the output is to map with the 6,000 plus. And we mentioned here, even Google NLP API only can map until 300 plus category for their pre-existing service. And then they, this is the, some of the um, method we're going to select. Since normal classifier not going to help on 6,000 category, we try naive base, we try SVM. Uh, we haven't go through the deep learning model. That one, um, for, for normal second learn classifier, only able to, at max, is 50 to 100 categories to achieve a good accuracy. So we try to use this work to work semantic similarity, just a word representation, and calculate the difference between the job post, job de uh, and job description with the Moscow group. So other alternative we mentioned is like custom deep learning model, BERT, LSTM. But you have to understand the deep learning models, normally they take three to four months before, just for the parameter tuning, and you get to pray hard for the accuracy. It's a black box tuning. So we might, we don't know where it's gonna stop and achieve a good accuracy. So we chose to not go into the deep learning model, and we also have other challenges, it's like limited time, less than two months, and one and resource. We have one data scientist and data engineer to do this project. So we try on the Google Word, uh, the API. So of course it can classify perfectly in the sense of very generic topic, but there's not uh, based on our needs. So always like you have to understand your problem and then frame, um, it's based on your use case and you have to uh, in this case, we have to come up with our own uh, customized classification model. So, no choice. No choice here. So, first, uh, the another part we're going to do is like, because we have uh, four different data sources here, we have Job Malaysia, Job Street, Mount Kerja, Glassdoor, Monster. So, all the information we, uh, we want to do a standardization before before, this is from different source, different trackings, and they have different data. So we, we will do a standardization and normalization across this data. Those are unavailable, whether we do information extractions from the job, other job data, or we try to um, enrich it with other data source. So these are our simplify architecture. So in fact, there's a all host on Google Cloud and also Bakery. Uh, we just want to simplify because some of the items uh, is prior and confidential. So for this case, we have data scrapping from all the job water using some Python Selenium. And we pass the result to the MongoDB. Because MongoDB store is good for store all those unstructured data. But because of the end user need, we need to index the document and pass back to SQL, SQL query. Easy for them to query, easy to get the result. And then we, our data process pipeline are all using uh, microservice and using cloud functions. And also we pass the result to the machine learning model and LP processing. And the other part is from the uh, feedback loop, human in the loop design. So we're gonna talk about this more. This is the overall data engineering and flow. At the every day 4 a.m., we're gonna trigger the ML program, our Python code, Python program. And then to, uh, to start looking for the new, new append job, raw data. They will pass through the NLP engine to do the performing the text processing. Every text processing, they will do a, we, we foresee is that in order to do the um, classification task, we do a direct key match, keyword matching first. Let's say any sales account manager in the job title, we find it the same in the mascot category, we direct get the number first, get the result first. Once, uh, this one can solve mostly 40% of the, uh, job post to the uh, result, uh, to the Moscow result. And then second, if for those cannot be matched, we pass to the semantic match. Semantic is the, is the thing we have to discuss here, is uh, later we're gonna show more, is that 
based on, let's say we have an Angular JS developer as a job post, but not appear in the mask code, the result there. So we need to find the closest to this Angular JS developer. Maybe it will be Vue.js developer or front-end developer. So we're going to use this semantic mesh to do the, uh, find the closest mesh for the job post to the uh, category. So once all the results, we're going to send back to the staging database. For every first of the month, we're going to export all these results to the user. And to, because user, you try to meet, uh, they are non-tech savvy people. So they, uh, we, we do the program to export all the results to a Google Sheet. So they can update or changes on the Google Sheet. Any things they have big changes or there's not uh, any status report, we're going to email to the administrations and update all the Google Sheet. And then save it back all the results back to the uh, DB. So these are the first step of the every program start, text processing. So the clean text, usually the um, known letter we come first, it's a regret form. Refer all the known letters, like include symbol and weird character, end of string. And then the second we will comment in the lower case and do the splitting into individual work, and then it's a tokenize it. And then pass the words back to the sort words. Sort words just like you see, those like, uh, words with a little meaning. And then we pass through the lemmatizer. Lemmatizer or the stammer, they, they try to achieve the same thing, convert the words into the root words. So then we join back the, the whole sentence. And then second is the information extractions. So in the job post, they don't have this field of study information. Uh, uh, they don't have this specific column, so we need to get from the job post raw data itself. So we we are doing here is that try to find a regress string here. Anything start from or start from certificate degree, and then we try to get the whole sentence back. The result is quite satisfying, but they can be improving. And then the second is the let's say they want to match with the skill. So we found a good library here is from Flash uh, Flash Test. They got a keyword processor. It's blazing fast. It's matching the keywords. Um, you have 6,000 keywords, uh, 6,000 group at one end. And then you try to match your string. It's very fast. They can return very good result. Anything contains skill, lab, uh, skill set contained in the job post, we're able to get it back. The third one is you have to train the word to web model. So in this case, um, this is where the semantic similarity magic happen. So um, we are using the Jensen work to web model. So what it does is it covers a string of the document and need to find the core occurrence between string. So the result will be like this. You, then you use a tension board to visualize it. Actually, there's a video here to spin, but just like, as you can see, this gives us the, we have trained a work to web model just to get the understanding of the similar text. The text. So if you search for AngularJS, you can see ReactJS, Angular, Vue.js, jQuery, Bootstrap, Vue is all here. So I will found this is a way to evaluate your work to web model. Because previously people, uh, if you do, you can always, because this model is a, is a representation and it's not a direct model. They don't have, they don't have uh, pre label. So how we can usually evaluate it is, is usually go through the human expert for this case. So we saw, we ran very pick some skill set and then saw the surrounding and then it's the accuracy is good enough so we will, we will uh, record our finding. After this is a classification result, so as you can see the input data, if you do a direct, it is a direct keyword match. So any input data, we saw it as a national sales manager, they match it at the category, there's a sales manager, they will match it, and they give a similarity of one. And then for others, any CV or study, so this information, we, we extract from the whole job row data, and then uh, do, a, do a direct match with our, at our another site, it's the NEC library. So, we found that the accuracy is quite straightforward and it's quite, um, they clear a lot of, uh, first, they do a first level of classification or matching. And then second is for the semantic. 
So as you can see, so, uh, if input data is software support executive, in our end, uh, they don't have this kind of job roles. It's not a direct match. So we're going to have to do a semantic. So you can see the closer they get it, they scan through all 6,000 categories. Then they, they return the closest one. And then with the similarity score. After the end of this result, actually, we're still not confident, fully confident on the machine itself. So we still have to, uh, human is at the end and also at the first step, they determine the rules and supervise all the results. So at the end, we will save it to a, a very, uh, the Google Sheet and then all those um, subject matter experts or the human stakeholder, they will go in and they will do a verifications. HR associate, uh, associate, fresh grad, then we map it to human resource, similarity is 0 0.62. So is it accurate? They can put a one here. If, if not accurate, they can put a zero, then they can put a suggested category. So we, then with this result, we we'll pass back to the machine and the model to make it more smarter next time. Next time they detect anything, this work, they will auto-categorize with the new category. So all this thing done, and we managed to deliver within two months, less than two months. So for the real impact is, um, oh, so uh, previously they are manually reading all the job data, manually classifying. So we improve the time of, we automate 90% of the manual work. And this is a statistic, 50K of job posts auto-classify. And then we save our three, 300 man hours, which is good to do headcount, to do all this cleaning, extracting, uh, verifying uh, job. And then also the most important, they can have faster discovery. So this data, this pipeline keep running. So every day they go fresh uh, inside. Some of the lessons learned uh, on, on doing this kind of project is you have to get buy in early. So identify all the stakeholder needs and involve them in the since beginning. For example, if you know you need product manager to involve in your project or subject, uh, certain subject matter expert know about this job market, please involve them in the earlier stage. Not until the later stage, when everything does, they have their own point of view, so you have to spend additional effort to convince them. And then also the goal and impact oriented. So are they aiming for um, solving some problem that we've, we always start with any objective or measurable result they can done. This can be in terms of reducing the cost to serve, uh, improving their productivity, or improving the revenue. And then start be agile. So like, like our case that we didn't start with deep learning model, even though we know deep learning model is outperformed. Yes, it does outperform all those models we use, uh, but it just take too much time to do. So we always start from the very simple model, and then we build the first prototype, and then get feedback. And then for technical challenge, all the data is not clean, and you have to find a way to make sure your data is have in a good quality stage. Why we say so? If let's say our model, our because our train when we train our work to web model, we are passing and ensure the data passing is uh, very good quality. Else it's garbage, garbage out. It will heavily affect the model accuracy. And then also some of them, if you work on the technology, uh, some of the legacy system will come into place. So we have to find a ways uh, to convince the stakeholders or yeah this technology gap, and for those other things that the performance, architecture and pipelines to solve problem. So this is more towards data architectures they need to take into consideration. For example, now we are running in uh, non-distributed uh, non computing. Let's say in future, the data set is getting bigger, so you're going to need uh, some distributed computing like Spark to help you to process all the data until do, uh, go through and then do the model and then uh, serve the result. All right, any question? Yeah? So you mentioned about uh, yes. the, the text data being yeah. not so clean. Yeah. So you know, because, uh, because currently I am also involved in the uh, NLP project, mm. we have a lot of spelling mistakes, yes. and then we try to find certain keywords and stuff. Yeah. We just can't seem to find them. Then we end up having to humanly verify every single thing. Yeah. 
So do you have to say do you have to so you say that mm. and you also mentioned that mm. you cut off like thirty percent of the mm. human labor. Mm. So what about the ten percent? 10% still the human need to be because uh, as we believe the system not until uh, the AI system not until so smart if they can able to do 100% we lost our job right <laughs> most of us are going to lose our job but the 10% is quite important in instead of like spending 30 days of doing uh, all these things now we spend human only spend 3 days and verify all the results and then to ensure the rules is being passed is good quality so for answer your other question is that you need to spend money on looking into the data, data the content, uh, spelling mistake, right? So actually there is some uh, spelling mistake, that means they have the autocorrect module available. In Python there is an autocorrect and then in other it's like, uh, I believe they have some search, um, some search, and, uh, search framework like Elasticsearch, they have some, fr uh, they have some uh, capability of handling all these different variations. So you can leverage on those like uh, auto creation package. Yeah. Even though it's not perfect, but it might solve a lot. We uh, yeah. Okay. Instead of doing manual. Yeah, uh, I have several small questions. Yeah. Don't yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, if I have time. Yeah, the question is actually yeah. very simple. Yeah. So the first one is uh since you're dealing with this, do you have a Bayesian uh domain expert uh, dealing mm. with this? Uh, mm. Because generally, it mm. depends on the subject matter. Yes. Say you are doing medical, you certainly need a guy like that. Mm. So he, he or she can help. Mm. I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm. So, okay. The second thing being, uh, this is very funny because yeah. recently I came across some very strange thing mm. uh, about job. So there was a post I saw in Glassdoor and mm. Indeed, mm. both. And these yeah. two are actually quite reliable. Mm. But they actually swap the job role. Mm. Uh, say job ABC, the, the description should be XYZ, but mm. they do it the other way. So it's a complete error. Okay. And strangely, or not strangely, this was repeated over three months. Mm. So, and that job happened to be quite important. Mm. So I don't know how you tackle this kind of nonsense. Mm. Uh, it's a human error yes. or whatever error, but if you are doing classification, uh, that has to be eliminated. Yeah. And at the very beginning of your talk, yeah. uh, you state one, two, three, four, five. Mm. Uh, the last one being sarcasm. Mm. So one thing NLP, mm. uh, I can swear to you, you mm. can uh, attack me, mm. uh, that it cannot do any pointed stuff. Mm. Uh, because in Twitter, for example, mm. uh, not that I have seen millions, yeah. but if people try to do something and they quote, sh quote Shakespeare yeah. or, or in a foreign language or whatever it is, uh, things never turn out correct. And if yeah. you have a huge portion of this, yes. uh, say dealing with a political sentiment, yeah. yes. uh, this is not going to work. I yeah. like to hear your opinion. Thank you. For this uh, sarcasm, I answer this first. I believe that there's a lot of room to improvement, and fortunately, or fortunately enough, we have uh, from HBS team they have worked together with A Star team. Some of them they are detect they have come up with some uh, baseline model to detect sarcasm. For example, they use hash. Then they put a uh, Trump make America great again. The AAA. So this one will heavily is a seed indicator for repeating the, the the using hashtag, but just like extend all those uh, pronouns, then it's a, uh, it's a good indicator they are making a sarcasm. This, yeah, that's one of the findings there. Yeah. And also, uh, I'm not in, in the actual fields of detecting sarcasm through the social media, because in formal text like social media, and formal text is quite different domain. So for those, uh, they have some certain expertise from them. So I would also love, love to love, uh, learn from them like how they can improve the sarcasm detector. Yeah. For our case, I didn't focus on it. Yeah. But I know they are doing something on, on this uh, sarcasm detector. Yeah. Uh, what about the, hmm. those questions before this? The second one, uh, sorry, can, can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, first one is the Bayesian stuff. Yeah, Bayesian. The second one yeah. is the wrongly classified stuff. The, if the Bayesian one, um, are you talking about the uh, the, the Bayesian um, theory that apply into? Yeah, that's right. like, 
yeah. in email yes. in yes. even now yes. they, 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 you, yes. they, they eliminate spammer by that yes. but that is grossly erroneous okay. yes. so what do you do? Yes. Uh, basic customer unit depend back on our model. So basic is that uh, uh, I'm not a fully statistician, but because we try to apply it, for example, the naive base is based on the Bayesian theory that probability probability happen occurrence of A condition and B conditions that can be is independent of each other, right? So let's say you have words email content the go please click is uh, have a high probability that belong to the when the second condition is a spam is happening. So your classifier will be accurate to capture this. Yeah. So the uh, for naive base uh, classifier for spam detector or document classifier, we found they give us a good accuracy. We not talk about the fundamental right or wrong, wrong first. Yeah, they give us a, achieve our task. Yeah. So as a business organization, we always drive to solve the. I mean, uh, help us to complete the task. So for the theoretical, I mean theoretical framework or the fundamental, so maybe can let the expert to debate on it. Yeah. For the second part that you mentioned about a lot of wrong categorization data, so there's a part of human in the loop that we encourage to come out to, to, to detect and verify the result. So this, uh, regardless of whether it's a machine generated wrong or human generated wrong, it's an error. So we have to clean it up before they're being passed to, to the final model and result. So I will say that it's like we still have this human interaction inside. Yeah. Unless they come up with some, some other AI algorithm to train another uh, ML to detect all this. There's, there's a, there's a um, research on this to help you to capture all those uh, fraud and misclassified. But we, we uh, let the expert to do this. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you.